So yes, I was dumped. <laughs> Hey guys, so we are filming another Get Ready With Me. Um, you guys really loved my first one, so I am giving you guys another one. This time we are getting ready for an actual date. Um, also, by the way, um, yeah, I broke one of my nails. So if you guys see it some, at some point in the video, please just let it be. I never ever, this is very ghetto behavior. Like I never ever ever break my nails ever. I don't even know how this happened, but it did. But it's fine it's okay so we are getting ready for a date um this is gonna be the second date with this guy and he is a very 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 attractive guy <laughs> we like him <laughs> it's not gonna go anywhere because i'm not trying to be anyone's girlfriend at the moment but which sort of defeats the purpose of dating because technically you should be dating for wanting to get into a relationship but i'm just dating because I can. You know, sometimes you just need a reminder that you can still pull, you know, you can still pull some good ones, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I had asked you guys on Instagram to ask me what topics you would like me to talk about in this Get Ready With Me. And uh, first of all, can you talk about how there's an overwhelmingly high number of you guys experiencing heartbreaks at the moment? What's going on? Is it the retrograde? Is it the Mercury's? What's what's happening, baby? What's happening? There are so many of you saying you want me to talk about heartbreaks, how to deal with heartbreaks, and friendship heartbreaks as well. Damn, that sucks. Um, I feel bad for you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna make this very light because okay, honestly, I remember when I was going through a heartbreak. Yo, what's all? Ah, uh, uh, it was. It was bad and honestly like no amount of people telling me how they've dealt with the breakup ever felt like it was enough for me because i always felt like nah you don't really understand what type of heartbreak i'm going through i felt like my breakup was a was the worst i haven't experienced a heartbreak in going to three years now um right now you know i am in a few talking stages uh, that I already know are not gonna go anywhere because I'm not gonna allow them to go anywhere. This is this is this is trauma speaking. This is this is what you get. <laughs> this is what you get. Like <laughs> when your heart is so broken and now you're just like, you know what? Even me, I can break hearts. So I'm currently in my evil woman era. Okay. <laughs> I feel like everyone has to go through their villain you know period and i think i'm currently in my villain period like i actually i don't care i don't want to be anyone's girlfriend i like i literally get to a point where we've been talking to someone and i'm like i need to think of how i'm gonna leave this situation because yeah it's getting a little deeper than i wanted it to which is a cry for help technically i should be going for therapy instead of coming to talk to you guys here but it's fine it's fine i don't want to date for marriage anyway until i'm like 20 seven or like until my aunties start telling me to bring them someone at home but now i'm 22 like it's fine it's fine let me just you know see who i'm pulling <laughs> so going in with the laura Mercier powder and by the way i started this video a lot earlier um so that i can have enough time to you know have a chat with you guys but also i need to curl this hair and I bought this new curling iron that I've never used. I've never even used a curling iron in my life. So I don't want to make any mistakes. And I don't really know what outfit I'm going to wear as well. We're currently in fall. So the weather has gotten colder. My vibe with this guy is really good. Like we've got to a good level because we talk a lot. He did say that the restaurant we're going to is one of my favorites because I had told him... Um, I'd, I'd given him a list of my favorite restaurants so if it's one of my faves it means they have a dress code so I would have to you know dress up properly and wear something nice anyway so I think we're gonna start there we will start with a heartbreak conversation so okay here's the thing I'll tell you guys how to deal with heartbreaks based on how I dealt with mine okay so I have I have gone through a few heartbreaks uh, I, quite a number <laughs> quite a number you know some of them no not some actually one of them was um a breakup for a relationship that didn't actually happen <laughs> like me and this guy i just really like this guy so much and 
um at that time i was quite young this happened like a long time ago um i was still back in kenya at that time actually and yeah the relationship didn't happen but then he moved on to another girl because i wasn't giving him a chance and it's because you know like he at that time you know i didn't want to be involved with people who are doing drugs whatever he was like he was he was, he was deep in the deep deep in the illegality <laughs> he was deep in that so and at that time i was a you know i was a good girl i didn't want to be involved with those type of people but then i was still keeping him around and keeping his hopes up but then not saying yes when he wanted me to be his girlfriend so he moved on to someone else and i felt like shit which i cried so much and it ended and i moved on and right now i look at him and i'm like anyway that's that that happens by the way this this is one thing you guys should know like the the younger you're dating the more cringe it's gonna be when you grow because right now when i tell you i look at some of the people that i shed tears for and i just want to strangle myself i'm just like i was crying for you me i this is what I'm telling you guys, like just wait until you at least get into your, you know, your, your glow up era. There's definitely been a huge glow up, but then I want it to be a lot bigger than it is right now. So I still haven't like got to the, you know, my epitome per se. One of the worst heartbreaks that I have ever endured, I'm not going to get into the details of when it happened or with who and how old I was, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to get into those details. This is my platform and I want to make this a safe space for all of us, including myself. So please, if you know in any of the story times that I give, if you ever know who I'm talking to, do not even leave a comment saying who that person is or whatever, or don't go attacking them. Or This is nothing to do with attacking people on a personal level. This is just me giving my own experience from my own point of view about my life. So I'm going to focus on the, the beats where I have something to do with it like I'm not gonna get into details about the person and those things like I that's not my chat my that, that's not my type of channel I'm not here to expose people I find that behavior very cringy so I'm not gonna do that to anyone this relationship like ended a month after my birthday my birthday is in December so it ended in January and that time on my birthday I was I wasn't with him on my birthday I was with him before few days before my birthday and he did something for me and whatever and it was nice and fun and blah 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 and you know it's a relationship where I was quite happy I was in love and so was he I mean I, I I thought he was he okay he genuinely said he was happy with me so I guess um and then after some time actually like after my birthday I don't know things got a bit off um like end of december going into january and then in january um we sort of like were okay but then not as okay as we used to be and then he like had a week where he was quite quite off like we didn't really talk much that entire week and then he calls me after the week had ended and you know he wanted us to have a conversation and before he started he's like are you in a good mental space to listen to whatever I'm going to tell you? I'm like, a good mental space? Oh, okay. I was thinking, in fact, I even thought, like, here's the thing, like, I nothing technically was happening was happening in the relationship that was negative so i wasn't expecting a breakup or anything like that i feel like a lot of the times in most of the situations before you guys like break up there's normally signs that that relationship is heading in that direction in this case there were no signs there were no signs that we were heading in that direction at least on my end and you know what probably i was being delusional because one of the things about me i am a true sagittarius like I genuinely am always optimistic all the time to a point where sometimes I'm being delusional. So I, I was probably being delusional and I don't know. Um, but yeah, maybe to him, he had seen, you know, red flags. I don't know. I, I have no idea. We had a conversation and he ended the relationship. So yes, I was dumped. <laughs> oh, I was dumped. And that was the first time someone ended a relationship and it wasn't me because i'm the one who always used to end my all the relationships i was in and so for that reason i was always prepared 
because I knew I was the one who was planning to end the relationship. So I feel like, I feel like, um, then the way I dealt with my other breakups was a lot better than this one because I already knew when it was happening and I feel like breakups are painful for both the person who is leaving and the person who is being left because I have experienced both sides and when I'm the one who was making the decision to leave it always used to hurt me because I hated that the, the person wasn't acting right to the point where he's putting me in a situation where I have to choose between being with him and ending the relationship so it was always sad but also on this other end where I got left and dealing with the rejection it's a different kind of pain. It's a different kind of pain. <gasps> Yo, I'm telling you. So first of all, I am hurt. I'm heartbroken because the relationship has ended. It was the type of relationship that no one, no one really saw that breakup coming. I didn't see it coming. None of the people that I'm very close to saw it coming. I think he's the only one who knew it was going to happen. So maybe the way he dealt with it was a lot better because he knew that the relationship was going to end. I didn't, so the roller coaster of emotions that I went through because of that breakup. Hey, I'm just I'm just happy I'm not in that place anymore. Anyway, let me do my liner and my lashes, then I'll I'll get back to you guys. Whew, okay, so I'm done with the eyes and I've done my lashes as well. I really love these lashes. I got them from Amazon and I feel like they kind of look like lash extensions so i'm going in with my foundation and this one is the estee Lauder double wear in the shade 6w1 sandalwood i've said it before it's a little darker than me but um my face my neck and my chest and the rest of my body are different shades so i prefer to go darker so yeah anyway back to the story um what was i saying yeah so i told my and the light keeps shifting i think because the window the blinds are open so i'm gonna have to keep looking at the viewfinder to see if you guys are seeing me properly but anyway so what was i saying the um, so after he broke up with me when i tell you guys i wailed I was in disbelief. First of all, when he told me about it, I thought he was joking. I actually thought, dead ass, I thought he was joking. So he says that and I'm looking at him, expecting him to say he's joking. But the guy was serious. The guy was actually serious. So I'm like, wait, where is this coming from? I was so confused because it's not like something had happened that was pushing maybe something had happened and i just didn't know maybe he just wasn't telling me what i had done or whatever because the thing with me is when someone does me wrong i will tell you like i'm not the type of person who leaves a situation without explaining exactly why i'm leaving i will tell you exactly why i'm leaving and exactly how i got that decision so i think because i'm used to that i was expecting him to tell me well, like what happened how he got that decision whatever anyway he gave me the speech of it's not you it's me <sighs> the pain <laughs> and first of all like when people say it's not you it's me it's always okay no but i can't actually say it was me because i don't remember doing something wrong honestly to me i think i was a very good girlfriend i've always been a very good girlfriend to the people i've dated oh this is the um urban decay all nighter i'll have this makeup on the entire night so i want it to sit properly um yeah so i was saying when i realized he wasn't joking and he was actually serious yo the way i wailed when that that call ended i literally wailed i called my best friend I was crying and even her she was so confused because she's like how why what do you mean like none of us expected that relationship to end not at that time honestly like not whatsoever and the thing is I feel like we had just got to the point where the relationship was becoming real like you know now we were having you know some fights here and there and whatever and I don't know he did say that I'm, I'm the person he's fought with the most <laughs> out of all the relationships he's been with so 
And in my head, I was like, damn, you're the one I fought with the least. So it's either I'm toxic, maybe I was just used to very toxic situations, but at the same time, I still maintain the fights we had weren't bad to that level. I honestly feel like he, I think he probably just fell out of love and needed a way out. I don't know. This is just my opinion. This is, I honestly, I don't know. I don't really know why. Um, because I didn't necessarily like, you know, there was no closure after that, which actually is a point that I have realized. The idea of closure is a lie. That idea that we create in our heads that, oh, you need to have a conversation after the relationship has ended to finalize things and to, you know, speak your mind and whatever, it might help. But also, it is 100% possible to move on in a healthy way without getting the closure. Because I didn't get the closure and I'm glad I didn't because I feel like that closure would have, you know, taken me back 10 times in my healing journey. I'm okay that I didn't get the closure. I'm honestly quite okay. And after that point, all the situations I've been in that have ended, I don't feel the need to have closure after that. In friendship breakups, it's different. I feel like in friendship breakups, I give it a lot more chances because this is my friend. I never choose friends who are so different from me. So a lot of the times I'm very similar to my friends in terms of how we deal with things, how we deal with emotions. So I do prefer to have a conversation when it comes to a friendship breakup. When it comes to a relationship breakup, I think when it's done, it should be done. And block, delete, everything. I personally, I'm a blocker. I will block you. I will block everyone who has something to do with you i will mute the people that i can't block but have a connection to you i'm not even doing out i'm not doing it out of malice like i'm just doing it because it actually helps me to move on because if i keep seeing you or i keep seeing people who have something to do with you or other people who you're friends with posting you and stuff like that that's gonna trigger me and i don't want to be in that situation so for me i believe in blocking deleting muting whatever you have to do like just block your ears eyes yeah i called my best friend cried i was wailing i was in disbelief i actually kept thinking he's gonna text me and say he's joking i was i was perplexed flabbergasted discombobulated i was in turmoil think of all the words that you wrote in composition all of those words yeah that was me after some time i was like you know what i'm gonna have to figure a way out to get myself out of this situation in a healthy way but the relationship that i had before that one um when i broke up with a guy i you know took a break from social media and did all those things so you know i just need a break to myself blah 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 i did that with my previous with the previous relationship before that one and with this one i didn't want to so i decided it's so painful but I'm gonna try to move on with my life whilst going through this heartbreak. So I didn't take any breaks from social media. I didn't really like do, you know, anything to sort of take a break from my life because those breaks that you're taking from your life, you don't realize, but life, life is moving on. Like people are moving on. When you're going through that heartbreak and you're crying and you're sleeping in your room and not doing anything, the curtains are closed, go and just, even just peep through the window and you'll see cars moving and life going on. Everyone is moving on with their life. So if you want to stay there and stop your life because someone decided not to choose you, really, is that how you want to go? I think the best way to deal with a breakup is, yes, take the time that you need, but it shouldn't be more than two days. Like have two days where you're just crying and weeping and you're on the floor. And then once you're done, pick yourself up and try to move on with your life whilst going through the breakup. And that's not to mean that you won't have days where you're just like, oh God, I can't do this. I did. But I tell you guys, I took a year and a half to fully get over this breakup. Like right now I'm talking about it and I'm summarizing it and it's sounding all jolly and quick and fun. It was hard. It was hard. I think that was one of the hardest um situations that i have ever had to deal with uh yeah that was that was really really hard of course there's so many emotions the rejection you know being the one who's left and not understanding why it happened and the fact that according to me i think i, I think i really tried to be 
a good girlfriend and up to now i still maintain that i still think i was a good girlfriend not even to say that he wasn't a good boyfriend he was like throughout the relationship i have nothing to complain about throughout the relationship it's just the way it ended one of my male friends <laughs> one of my closest male friends said <laughs> he was like have you ever gone through a heartbreak when you're doing exams like you're there you're trying to focus you're trying to write something you're thinking and the only thing that are coming to your head are memories <laughs> and tears are just rolling <laughs> you're trying to write the exam and tears are just falling on the paper and you're trying to be strong you're trying to think and there's nothing coming up <laughs> that's exactly what i was feeling like i wasn't i wasn't doing any exams or anything but i was doing my um like my final assignments and everything and i'm trying to type on my laptop and the tears are just dropping on my laptop my mom is asking me what's wrong and i'm just there acting like it's fine me i'm okay and my mom knew this guy by the way so i also had to explain to her which is another thing i am never ever introducing anyone that i'm seeing to my mom unless they're coming for Aurora show. Unless they're coming home for like the proper introduction with their people and my people, whatever. That is the only time I'm going to introduce someone when we're engaged. Until then, whoever else I am seeing, it's between me and them. They're never going to meet anyone in my life ever. Like ever. I'm not introducing them to anyone. I don't, I don't want to deal with that. Like being in that situation where I have to explain to everyone who knew this person that we've broken up and why and... It's so tiring it's honestly so tiring and especially now that i'm 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 not i'm dating but not seriously you know if i end up introducing everyone who i'm dating to people who are close to me like eh, the list is gonna be a bit too long so we're not doing that we're not doing that let me see if shutting those blinds is gonna help i hope that's gonna be better okay i'm gonna have to keep looking at the viewfinder so that you guys are not you know so that I'm not completely disappeared and I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, like it's okay for you to take a break and process the breakup if that's what you need. Like take take the time that you need to process the breakup, cry if you have to. But then once you're done, once you're tired of crying, because you're going to get sick of crying, start trying to move on with your life. The important thing when it comes to breakups, don't deny that it sucks it sucks it, it feels bad i like when i was going through my breakup the feelings i was feeling were genuine i i got rejected i had formed of course some attachment to him and now it's not there anymore now if i'm taking snaps or whatever i can't send them to him which reminds me actually you know how snapchat um like reminds you of where you were two years ago three years ago whatever so i got you know the notification for where i was um a few years ago in that same month and it was a snap of myself um i remember very well that i'd taken that snap um a day after that relationship ended and i had spent the whole day crying and everything and then i was like okay let me take a shower and just try and do something and when i finished taking a shower i went and like took some you know vid selfie videos of myself and immediately i was like damn normally i would send this to him and i can't so i started crying <laughs> no okay honestly at that time it was valid like it was a, it was a valid reason yo i cried i'm just like normally i would send this to him now look i have to keep them to myself and post them on instagram and act like i'm okay <laughs> time my eyes were swollen i had been crying oh my god you know it's so crazy that i'm laughing about it right now because at that time i genuinely felt like my life was over didn't think i was ever gonna get to a point where i am happy and i'm laughing about it in fact it's crazy because i remember my best friend telling me about it and she's like you know you're gonna get to a point where you'll be remembering this and it's just gonna be a memory when am i ever gonna get to that point like i it just feels like it's gonna be a never-ending pain which brings me to my next point i'm just gonna tell you this now if you're going through a breakup right now and you're listening to me you're probably even getting irritated that i'm laughing about this and i'm making a joke out of this but what i'm gonna tell you is when i swear to you that you're going to be okay you will you will be okay you will be okay you'll get to a point where it's just gonna be a memory in fact i've even got to a point where some 
some details are a bit fuzzy like i've forgotten so many things that actually happened things that i thought i would never ever forget because it was so painful i've forgotten them because sometimes like the the mind can be so traumatized that it blocks out certain details i'm genuinely happy and i have a good relationship with myself i forgave myself for being in that situation for you know doing the things that i did at that point with the knowledge that i had at that point and I also forgave, you know, the people who have brought me pain because that's really, truly the only way to heal. Like, you have to just forgive yourself and forgive the people. I know that our generation really likes to exhort um, toxicity, but it's not fun to be toxic. Okay, don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, I, I know, I'm aware that I'm in my villain era and I'm currently being toxic, but I don't go as far as hurting people. I actually leave the situation before it gets too deep to the point where me to the point where my actions would have a significant impact on someone else's emotions i don't want to be the cause of pain in people's lives so right now you know i make it very clear that i am dating and i'm going on dates for the mere purpose of getting to know someone but not necessarily because i'm trying to get into a long-term relationship so if i ended up getting into a relationship right now it for sure for sure will be short term and I will make that clear. I will make it clear that I'm here for a short time. <laughs> I'm here for a good time, not a long time, you know. I <laughs> Oh, my battery is flashing. Oh god. Okay. Let me just change my battery. I'm coming. I just changed my battery and I am back. I just I don't think it's practical to date the same person until when I get married because I'm not planning to get married anytime soon. I am aware that I am quite selfish at the moment. I only care about myself right now and I just don't have the capacity to accommodate someone else's emotions right now. I just I'm not in that I'm not in that place and for that reason I don't want to give anyone hopes that they're going to be in a relationship with me for long, you know, until we're getting married because I don't want to get married anytime soon. Like I feel like I'm in my true Sagittarius era because right now when I hear commitment, I just want to run. I just want to run. I'm like, why are you constraining me? I feel like you're constraining me. I want my freedom. There's a few guys that I'm talking to and one of them is extremely, he's, he's very affectionate. Um, and in, in normal circumstances, I would really like that. Like I would actually like that he's very affectionate and he's very present and he really likes calling me all the time. And every time I see a call, I'm just like, gosh, why are you calling me? You could always just drop a text and tell me why, what you want to say, why are you calling? And it, on FaceTime, on fa <sighs> you want me to be sitting on FaceTime talking to you right now, surely. Well, I could just be watching Netflix or like just sit in the house just doing something chill and you want me to sit on FaceTime with you. Like, that's the thing. I'm not in that place. I'm just not in that place because normally I would love that. When I really wanted a relationship and stuff like that, such things would really be what I wanted. But right now, I couldn't think of anything worse. The idea of being someone's girlfriend right now feels like I'm being suffocated. I... <laughs> No. that's why it's important to be honest with people like don't get into situations where you're giving mixed emotions and making people think that you want to be in a relationship when you don't i am very clear that i don't want a relationship and lucky for me you know the guys are like you know what is i at least i'm getting a chance to spend time with you and i'm like And to be honest, all the people that I'm in talking stages with and I've told them I'm not here because of wanting to be in a relationship. So I hope you have that clear in your mind. And a lot of the times I haven't really had anyone who has said, oh, that's a deal breaker for me. I haven't really had anyone. Maybe because I'm just, you know, maybe I'm just a fine take. But also I think maybe a lot of them think that along the way I'm going to change my mind. But no, I'm not going to change my mind. If I am just commitment right now is scary it's scary like yo that when i hear people are dating for marriage in uni unless you're trying to get married early like unless you're getting married immediately after uni i just don't know how you can be with the same person in your entire 20s when you're supposed to be building your life and stabilizing yourself and getting to know yourself you know doing fun and crazy things 
taking risks and not have to answer to anyone i don't know how you can spend those years with someone and then get married to them and have with the same no experience no nothing you haven't even gotten to know exactly what she like the type of guys that i used to find attractive when i was like younger when i was dating are completely different from the guys that i find attractive right now like i'm sorry but maybe it's an era but i really i'm not a medium ugly girl like I, I i rode that trend and i tried it and i'm sorry I, I like i like the pretty boys i'm sorry but i like the pretty boys i like the pretty boys and some things right now are more important to me for example um money <laughs> um yeah for me right now it's important for me to be with someone who who has it or is working towards it and if they're working towards it, at least let them come from a stable family. <laughs> unfortunately, that's important to me. Fortunately or unfortunately, that's what is important to me. And also another thing, now that I have been dating guys who drive and not drive their dad's car, like they actually have their own cars. I can't imagine being in a situation where I have to get a train or I have to get an Uber I mean, I can get an Uber if he's the one calling the Uber, but he has to drop me home. So, because I have been in situations where I'm seeing someone who's in a different city from where I am, and all the times I've been lucky for I've been lucky because they always come to pick me up. So even if we end up going like on a date to a different city, if we're going to London, um, or like Birmingham or whatever, I can still come back home the same night because they drive and they can drop me back home i can't go back to i'm going to see him and i'm getting the train i'm going to see him and i'm getting the bus okay first of all i haven't even been in the bus i haven't even taken the bus for a very very long time it's just, it's just not gonna work no sorry sorry no <laughs> I feel like once you get clear about the things that you like and are important to you you're only going to attract you're going to attract exactly that because once i got very clear that that's what i wanted i haven't met anyone who doesn't drive or doesn't have money or doesn't look physically appealing according to what i like and right now i'm talking to this one guy who like he's really like physically fit and everything and i never thought i was like you know a muscly guy type of person but <sighs> like this i'm even going to the gym because i want to make sure that at least i'm also aligning to the type of girl that he would like you know he already likes me i know he already likes me but like he's just so physically attractive he's so manly and so masculine and I remember when I was young, the idea of let's start together and build together and like if you asked me at that time what I bring to the table, I will even list it for you and I'm just like, yeah, I bring this, I'm independent. Right now, I just want to puke if someone says that to me. Thank God I've never had anyone ask me what I bring to the table, but the moment anyone asks me that, I'm out. Like... I'm actually out. I was telling my best friend that when I was younger and I, cause I remember I took, you know, that test for like, what is your love language and stuff like that. I remember I took that test, um, when I was like 19, 20 there and you know, you can actually tailor the responses to be what you would like them to be. And at that time I knew I've always known that I like gifts and gifts now i'm grounded in my love language gifts is my love language i love gifts i love nice things i when i tell you i'm a proper like i'm a girly girl i love things i love things at that time when i did that test i tailored it to sound like i'm not that much into gifts because i didn't want to look like i am materialistic i am what i was really a pick me when i was young like i was such a pick me and it's okay to be a pick me because it comes from a point of trauma and of course when you don't know better you, you you when you don't know better that's all you know i'd always feel the need to show that i can take care of myself and whatever and now 
I can take care of myself a hundred percent, but I don't feel the need to tell you how much. You don't have to pay for my bills. I can take care of myself and whatever. Nyef, nyef, nyef. Like I actually have more money than I did at that time, definitely. And I don't feel the need to show a man that I can take care of myself because the kind of men that I attract right now are men who are grounded in their masculinity and don't mind taking the bill and paying it, coming home to pick me up and stuff like that. Like those are the kind of men that I am currently attracting. So I don't, I no longer have those conversations of I can take care of myself. I can take my own bill. I am really trying to channel my feminine energy. So, you know, I am getting comfortable with receiving things and being treated well and acting like a damsel in distress. And when I tell you it works, it works. I know a few years from now, I'm also going to be in a different place compared to where I am right now. And that's okay. Those are the cycles of life. So that's why that idea of dating the same person from uni, you went to uni to look for a husband. How are we in 1910? I just don't understand how you guys can do that. And honestly, if you can, well, props to you, Ben. Yeah, you're, you're definitely better than me because I, I could never. I actually could never. I know. And then you're with the same person. Some of you guys, your uni ends in six years. You're going to be the same person for six years straight. And then after that, he cheats on you and now you're back to square one. Why? The entire uni experience, you've just been cooking for him and hey, <laughs> God deliver. <laughs> deliver some of them. Right now, I am so grounded in my like femininity and it's still a struggle for me. It's still a struggle for me because sometimes I really, of course, because of how life has been and some of the things that we've been through, a lot of us do tend to, you know, like tap more into our masculine energy and you become so defensive and whatever. And it's okay because life is what sort of gets you to be like that. But once I realize that actually I should be, you know, grounded in my femininity, I have been working to make sure, I've been working hard to make sure that I do, that I actually get grounded in my femininity and allow the men in my life to show up, you know, as the men, as the masculine energy, because that's what I want. I don't want to attract feminine men. There's nothing wrong with feminine men, but attracting a feminine man would mean that I have to tap into my masculinity and I don't want that. I want to be a damsel in distress. You know, my mom and I, um, a few days ago, were talking about how, like, it's just nice to have a guy in your life and then you tell them, oh yeah, my car is making a noise. It's just going grum, grum, grum. I don't know why. <laughs> Like, you know, and the rest of the time when he's not there, you're the one, you're the mechanic, you're the DIY, you're doing everything. But now once he's there, you're just like, yeah, first of all, could you, could you get me that cup over there? It's so high. I can't reach it when he's not there. You climb on everything. You even get a ladder. You even like climb on the kitchen counter and get whatever you're getting. You know, like, it's just nice to relax into your feminine energy. And I want to, I am practicing that for the time that I'm gonna be ready to start dating for marriage because I want to attract a man who is comfortable in his masculine energy. And for me to do that, I have to be comfortable in my feminine energy. Men who are supposed to be happily married and stuff like that, and their women, you know, their wives are the ones who have built the entire empire and are the ones who are paying for everything. They go and, you know, they get the little girls who do nothing and want to provide for them. At the time they've left a whole wife and kids and i'm not saying that that's the right way to do it it's not i'm just saying you gain nothing from being a pick me you gain nothing from being a pick me so if you like money like money I'd rather be in the situation where the man knows that you like money and he's there giving you money plus other things than be in the situation where you're paying for the bills you're paying 50 50 you're doing everything and you all you're getting is lies you're being cheated on you're being treated badly why why at least this other part is a return on investment right now if i ever go through a breakup I'm going to be so graceful about it because I've got to a point where I actually understand in this life, you don't own anyone. You don't own anyone. You only get to experience people. And sometimes you will only experience those people for a period of time. So when that period of time is done, 
then the time is done. Let it go gracefully. Do not hold on to people because that's not love. And when you're so young, you think that you're in love with someone and you're so scared of losing them and you think, oh my God, if you lose them, your life is never going to be the same. That's not love. That's attachment and it's unhealthy. No one is supposed to have so much power over your life that when they're not there, you feel like your life is over. And that's exactly what I felt. And it took me a while to get myself out of that situation. So for me to get to this point where... I'm so grounded in myself right now if I get into a relationship and it ends I'm gonna be okay with it like I, it's, it's gonna hurt definitely because you know you've lost someone that you 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 wanted to be um, a part of your life but it's not gonna affect me the way the other breakups have affected me you know previously in your early 20s you should be spending time getting to know yourself and loving yourself. And that's why being in a relationship in your early 20s, eh, I'm sorry, but like, I'm not predicting bad things happening for you, but eh, I just don't think it's wise, honestly. I feel like a lot of people who do that get to a point where once the relationship has ended, you feel like you spent your most important years catering to someone else, trying to be a good person and present for someone else's life instead of doing it for yourself. However, in as much as I've said all those things about not dating right now, if you want to date now and you're in your 20s, that's fine. Like you, you do you, you do you because we all have different opinions to want for our own lives. And for me right now, marriage and relationships are just not a priority for me right now. You know, right now my primary focus is building my career, building myself, finding my passion and you know just loving what i'm doing so i'm just not able to cater to someone else at the moment and that's okay if you are in you know if your primary goal is marriage and children and family and all that and you want to do that early then that's fine you go ahead you can date you can do whatever you want to um i'm just giving this advice for the people who are probably like me and are looking to first of all build themselves before they can you know get into um a long-term relationship one thing is for sure you will definitely go through a form of heartbreak at some point heartbreaks are a part of life they suck but they're important they're important because they'll teach you some of the most important lessons in your life and you know sometimes it's just important to go through them unfortunately like it's tough out here so to continue with the story because i definitely think i diverted way too much um but yeah to continue with the story of how i dealt with my breakup i honestly i allowed myself to feel everything i moved on with my life and i tried to channel my emotions into the things that made me happy you know when people say oh when you're going through a breakup you know the best thing is to you know like have some quality time with yourself spend time with your friends and your loved ones and whatever in as much as yes you can do that that only helps you to cope with the breakup it doesn't necessarily actually heal you from the breakup to be honest and this is gonna suck so much if you're going through this and i tell you this at this time the only thing that truly heals a breakup is time unfortunately because I remember I also had this when I was going through my breakup and when people would say that I just wanted to strangle them because I'm like I'm sick of this pain just take it out of me take it out of my chest I'm tired of feeling like this that's why right now I can come and sit here and talk about this breakup like it's nothing I can laugh about it because I've already gone through the period of time that I needed to completely heal from this breakup right now none of my exes evoke any emotion in me there's no hate there's no love there's no joy there's no nothing like there's just nothing there's no emotions that i evoked in me i just think when i look at them i'm like you're someone i shared something with and it ended you are a good person and i'm still a good person you're still a good person i'm still a good person and that's fine we just weren't meant for each other there's no bitterness no nothing i'm just okay and that's what you should be aiming for to get to a point where the breakup and the relationship and that person no longer evokes an emotion and the only way to get to that point is time i took a very long time to get over 
that heartbreak that I've told you guys about, it took me a year and a half to fully get over the breakup. Of course, not every day was like so bad and I was crying and everything, but I, I still had moments where I'd relapse. I'd think that I've, you know, I'm, I'm healed and I'm done with the breakup. And then after some time, I go back to thinking about him again and crying. I just remember when I finally discovered that, oh my God, um, I'm okay. It was one time, I think it's actually on his birthday and normally I would always remember his birthday and on that day I didn't remember his birthday. So I actually, someone had posted him on his story, a friend of his had posted him on his story and I saw it and like I, I saw it and I was like, oh okay, and I moved on and I was like, wait, hold on, was that? And then I went back and I was like, oh yeah, it's his birthday. And I felt nothing. There was no pain. There was no sadness. There was no bitter. There was nothing. Like I felt nothing. And I was like, oh my God, I'm okay. I'm okay. Like I, I am actually okay. And I remember I told my best friend, I was like, I didn't realize, but I haven't thought about him for such a long time. And now I saw something that technically should trigger me, but I didn't feel anything. And that's when I knew I was over it. I was over it. I was over the heartbreak. I was over the pain. And right now, when I talk about it, I'm not getting triggered, like, at whatsoever. Mom, I'm filming. You even come at the right time, because I'm about to finish. Do you? Oh, okay. I, I still need to curl my hair, but I'll do that. I won't this is another one. No, no, it's not. It's the same one. Oh, okay. Mm. Look at me, look at me, look at me. <laughs> what has happened to us? <laughs> Jana, <laughs> Jana, <laughs> Jana. <laughs> have you made the sausages? Yeah, oh, yeah good. Good. <laughs> You know, when, when you do this, it's really annoying. <laughs> Anyway, so this is how my outfit is looking. I went in with this um, red dress from O Poly, um, a black bag, I think it's from ASOS or Topshop, I can't remember. And then this heels, um, some black heels. And then I paired it with some silver accessories. Let me show you guys. Yep. And um, I really, really love my hair, by the way. I really love the hair with the curls like this. I just hope they don't fall. Okay, they definitely will like throughout the night because it's gonna get humid and stuff. It's not that cold. It's not cold enough for me to get a coat, but it's also not hot enough for me to just be like this uncomfortable. So it's just gonna be car, restaurant, car, then back home. So I should be okay dressed like this. And um, yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. I love you guys. Bye.